you know, at the time we were hit really hard with the devastating loss of our boy Huey. Cancer can go suck it. Our hearts were broken. Our home had this huge void, this huge hole, just dark. And uh, everything we were processing emotionally, uh, you know, we knew we couldn't find it in ourselves to adopt another dog, you know, not after that loss. But you know what, call it fate, call it destiny, karma, a blessing. I would call it a chance opportunity. Homer literally popped into our lives from that little puppy pen he was in, looking at us, calling to us, saying, here, I'm yours. And you know, the lady and I, we both realized that, you know, our hearts and our home was just too big to, to not give the relationship a chance. It was July 4th, 2021, when we adopted Homer, and he was three months old. He was everything you wanted to see in a puppy. Confident, secure, curious, fearless, easily trainable, and above all, so extremely affectionate. He has grown up to be a beautiful and healthy Fischler dog. All I can say is uh, we adore him and we love him so much. Homer, Homer, come. It's too bad I don't hunt because that's what Homer is. He's a hunting dog and all Vishlas are. Uh, it's a pleasure to see when we're out in walks and we let them go, those, those skills just kick in. You know, these are skills that were bred into them for hundreds of years. Uh, it's something you don't teach. He just has it in him to pick up the scent, start tracking and be able to ultimately flush out whatever he's focusing on. I think it's important to preserve those skills and just let them have at it. It helps release that energy. They need it. It's their drive. Now that Homer is an adult dog, we have an adult dog with an incredible amount of energy. And because of that, we had to develop a strategy and a plan how we're going to release his energy. Taking your bully stick. Taking your bully stick. Um. So we walk Homer on like a 16 foot retractable leash. It's pretty challenging walking him a lot of the time. Honestly, he is constantly running everywhere, sniffing everything, hunting for birds, rabbits, and, and basically just, you know, yanking me all over the place the entire time. <laughs> You have to be on guard while you're walking him because, I mean, if there's some sort of little critter that I don't see and he goes after it, he can he definitely like knock me over pretty easily. If if we he's under the heel command, it's like night and day. One thing that really helped us with Homer is we put him through training school and they helped harness some of that high level energy. We have Homer, who is just learning. We have Sadie, who has some resemblance of what's happening. <laughs> 
You can't say that Homer's not having a great time. <laughs> We will see where he's at in a week. <laughs> they already reinforced what we already taught them. Sit, lay down, stay. But they also added, go to your bed, go to your place, wait, and release. heel command was the most valuable thing they taught him. And so if you just let them go ahead and do what they want, it's going to be a very unpleasant experience. Homer's a really smart dog, and he learns quickly. Uh, he got through the basics like sit, stay, lay down, you know, those were really easy for him to learn. Those were just instantaneous. It was almost like he already knew it. And everything is uh, treat-based reward, um, positive reinforcement. When we started learning more advanced stuff, I was surprised at how quickly learned that, like center command, doing high fives with the right and the left paw, shaking with the right and the left paw, Homer has a very diverse personality. <laughs> he is very sweet. He's very affectionate. He loves interacting with us all the time. When, whenever we're doing something, he wants to be right there doing it with us. Whether it's like unloading groceries or vacuuming, cleaning the house, he's just like, he, if, if he could help, he would, but he mainly just gets in the way. And then just, you know, also has moments where he just wants to be by himself. Maybe like when we're watching TV or something, he'll just come out here in the living room. And he's very self-confident. Oh yeah, he's a total goofball. He is, he makes me laugh all the time. He cracks me up. He's, he's a source of entertainment every day of our lives. The training school also helped with crate training. It was a 30 day stay. And when the day was done, he had to go and sleep in his crate. And so that really helped us with crate training. He was already kind of used to it. This really helped him to find the crate place as a, a place of sanctuary and comfort. When we're home and when we're around, he's like really like excited and awake and active. But um, when we leave the house, he call, he just mellows right out. He just lays down, takes a nap. He's never chewed anything up or destroyed anything. He's just completely chill when we're not home. Um, we do we do make sure that we take him for like a nice long walk or something. Make sure we get his energy out before then. So Homer, um, we try to have him like fresh food diet. Then we don't we don't really give him kibble. Um, we did at first, but uh, he's not that crazy about kibble. And I just think that it's it's like healthier to have him on more of like a meat and veggie kind of diet, especially like sweet potatoes and stuff. He is really picky. He doesn't want. Um, the same thing day after day after day. He definitely needs some variety in his diet. And even though he's really hungry and he will eat, you know, just like insane amounts of food, he, he will be a little picky if we just give him the same thing over and over again. We were feeding him like farmer's dog meals, but he kind of got sick of those. So now we're trying to mix in a little bit of raw food into his diet. 
his stomach does seem like it gets upset by some things, so the, one of the things that we were feeding him had some lentils in it, and I don't think that really agreed with him, so trying to stick more with like switching over to like raw foods, sweet potatoes, things like that, some rice, um, bone broth, um, he likes goat yogurt and goat milk, <laughs> so we're still figuring the diet part out, but we have to keep switching it up because he gets bored if we don't. When all the work is done, you help them release that energy, you've played with them. It's almost like they're saying thanks when they come over to you and just lay on you, snuggle up to you, press their head up against your head. I mean, they are really that close to you. If you're someone that really cherishes your personal space, this is not gonna be the dog for you. I've had dogs of various breeds and I've never seen a dog that was so affectionate. And it's no wonder that this dog has been given the nickname, the Velcro dog. It is probably one of the most beautiful aspects of the Vishla. So if you're watching this and you're seriously considering getting a Vishla, I would just ask that you be honest with yourself and really look at your personality, your lifestyle, you and your partner, your family. Don't get a Vishla if you don't have a lot of energy, if you just want to sit and relax on your couch all day, if you are going to be away from your house all the time for long periods and you don't have a lot of time to spend with these guys, if you aren't very patient and just want a, a calm dog that you don't have to work very much with, don't get a Vishla if you have really sensitive skin because uh, I do actually, and, and I've just learned to live with it, but um, they their hair is wiry and it does give you a rash, especially like he'll nuzzle against my face and my whole face will be red and my neck will be red for a couple of hours because I think their, their fur is one of the um, more allergenic ones out there. I'd also say, don't get a Vishla if you're someone that doesn't like your personal space being violated because of how affectionate and how smothering the Vishla can be. If you're someone that loses your temper really quickly, you don't have much patience. Because one of the most important things about a Vishla is how sensitive they are. That affection comes with a high degree of sensitivity. Like I kind of have to like check my emotions. I'm feeling more anxiety. I'm getting stressed out. Homer will sense that and start coming to me with his tail tucked in between his leg. He's feeling a little nervous. He's feeling my vibe. And then if I'm getting too intense, he'll kind of go away, go back into a corner and it's heartbreaking. And I think that might be characteristics of a lot of Vishlas. That's something you need to consider. They are so in tune to emotions and feelings and your vibe. Again, I've had dogs of various breeds. I've never seen a dog that was like that. Anyone who decides to get a Vishla needs to understand, they need to respect and show honor to the breed and to the group of people that saved the Vishla from extinction. Not once, but twice. It's a sad fact, and I quote, 
Vishlas faced and survived several near extinctions in their history, including being overrun by pointer and German short hair pointers in the 1800s, and again to near extinction after World War II. We included a few links about the history of Vishlas in the description. A friendly reminder to please like this video and subscribe to Homer's YouTube channel. Thank you. The AKC site has a breed selector page. There's a link in the description. It's a wonderful page that walks you through really important questions to really put you with the dog that is going to be the most compatible for you. Unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of times people just, you know, on impulse will, you know, adopt a pet or buy a pet and, and they don't ask these questions ahead of time. And that, that is one of the biggest reasons that you see dogs surrendered back to, you know, like the pound is because people just are being impulsive and they're not really thinking about the long term before they adopt a pet. So if you're seriously considering adopting a Bishla, I would just put out there for your information that there are people dedicated to finding forever homes, forever families for older Vishlas to no fault of their own have been surrendered. There are some beautiful dogs out there, older Vishlas that need homes. And if that's an option you're willing to explore, you're all the better human for it.